hi guys this is Anurag Sidhana and in today's video we'll be discussing how can you avoid unnecessary if else statements from your Java code so I have already written a medium post for the same you can go to my profile which is Anurag Sidhana 22 and check this article the only thing is in this video we'll be discussing this topic in more details so stay tuned and if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so here we'll be discussing a common problem in which I think the if else is a code smell okay and so the common problem is in which like let, let's take an example in which an object can be of multiple types and based on those multiple types we want to execute different business logic or different utility methods and in this case without even thinking about anything we end up writing if else statements so I'll give you an, an example of this kind of scenario. Let's say we have an item object, then an item can be of type of cloth item, grocery item, and food item, etc. Et okay, so these kind of in these kind of cases, we just write if else to execute different logic. And the other example can be let's say we have a bus, the bus can be of type of AC, non AC, AC sleeper, non AC sleeper, these kind of cases. And we write uh, if we want to execute some code based on the types we write something like this if the type is food then do something if cloth then do other thing and grossy and etc so but in these cases these kind of common cases uh, we can avoid these if else statements now why why to avoid so why to avoid these if else statements because i think so these if else are code smell why because anytime anywhere in any class you are handling this object and you want to execute something based on the type you'll be writing these if else statements and let's say if the types are like greater than 10 or it's around 20 then 20 if else you'll write you'll need to write at every point in your code wherever you are handling this item object this is the first thing so this is the like uh, same duplication of code and uh, like everywhere and let's say you just want to handle those 20 types in that if the type is something else you just want to throw a validation exception then in that case at, and everywhere in code you explicitly need to take care that you are handling all the types here and if the type is something else then you need to throw the exception then that's why you need to remind all the types and all and every, every time you need to go to the like uh, item type in a class and you check whether all the types are covered or not this is the other thing okay and also the third thing so it's not like code is not readable like you need to check the type then you need to check the what is it doing and also writing the code on top of this is also hard so every time a new developer is handling item type project he needs to write it again the same thing so he needs to handle all the types and all so this is the bad thing about like these kind of cases and that's why i think it's a code smell so let's see how are we gonna handle these kind of cases so let's go here so the same example i have created an item entity class so so based so item can be a type of cloth food or grocery item so this JSON subtypes you have used so it decides the type like uh, decides the class on the subclass on which it should go based on the item type so it basically helps in serialization and deserialization basically in deserialization so whenever a class with types uh, let's say food comes so it will be deserialized into food item class so these kind of, so JSON subtypes helps in that so this is the item object then it has name price and tab then all the other classes has let's say size no, don't read uh, this for now so let's say cloth item as size then food item as is desert and grocery item has weight so these are the extra functionality with each child now so let's say somewhere in code you want to execute different method different thing based on the type of the class and we don't want to write any else so the common so you'll say like what are the cases like what are the example of like this uh, in which I, based on type i need to do something so the common example is let's say so this is the item class you'll be having an item model so model are basically representation of tables uh, in your java code so let's say you have an item model 
and you have this item DTO okay DTO or data transfer object which are used to transfer data outside the application via APIs or not so let's say you want to convert item model to item this is the DTO then in that case based on type you need to decide if type is this then convert if type is let's say item type load food then convert to let's say you have a data method convert to food response so let's say type contains the type of the item so these kind of cases you'll need to handle explicitly let's say you want to execute some business logic also let's say if item type is food you want to execute some other like state engine if uh, the uh, item type is let's say grocery you want to execute some other state engine or something like this so in that case also you need to write if else so that we can avoid so how can we avoid let's see so the basic so in two uh, i have explained here that like in two ways like it's basically the uh, two implementation of the same method same so here we are going to use the visitor design pattern so you can read about it like visitor design pattern we are going to use so based on the type it's going to visit the different methods so that's why we call it the visitor design pattern okay so here i have done the two implementations of same visitor design pattern uh, i'll explain you both of these so this is the item class as i said earlier so it has grocery food and cloth item so in item class so it's a abstract class and it has child classes we have defined one more method abstract method which is accept so this accept method accepts the visitor visitor so this visitor is the main class which decides on like for this cloth item which method should get executed on which for this food item which method should get executed so let's go to this item visitor so in item visitor if you'll see it's an interface so every time you want to execute like uh, we, are, we want to do some like time handling and based on time we need to do something then we need to like uh, implement this interface and if the if it's a cloth item then we can write the implementation uh, here in this this kind of uh, this this visit method then if it's a food item we can do uh, we can write the implementation in this visit method so this this is basically method overriding we have done okay so this is understandable so this is item visitor the three uh, item types we have and it has different visit method for each of these now this abstract method is accepting item visitor okay and this item visitor is basically uh, deciding which method should get executed based on the type of the class okay so now let's go to our application class so here we have in, uh, initialized three items food item grocery item and cloth item okay now we are calling this test we are written this test visitor method and we are calling this item dot accept method okay now this accept method so if you'll see here in each child class we have overridden this method we have done nothing if you see here we are just overridden this method and if you'll see this is the item visitor same and in item visitor dot visit so we have called dot visit with this like this means this cloth items instance so this visit will lead to here okay now it means each child item is taking the responsibility each child class is taking the responsibility which method should get called it's not the code like it's not the code here which is deciding based on the type that which method or which like uh, functionality should get called it's the item class itself which is deciding okay if my type is because this item class already knows my type is food then that's why this visit with food item should get called okay so same we have done here also uh, in other other classes so grocery item also we have overhead in this in cloth item also we have already in this okay now go to this so if you'll see so these are the test visitor we have provided a food item so this this method doesn't aware about the type of the item yet okay so this is a basic item class based on the type it can decide okay uh, the type of the item okay but here what we do is so we know that it has a accept method which accept the visitor okay now this visitor has different implementation okay so i'll write it again i'll just comment it out 
okay so here this is item class dot visit and dot accept okay so it's accepting item visitor so item visitor in an interface i need to implement it new item visitor okay so here i need to provide the type type which we like which we want to return from this uh, accept method okay this is returning some type right so it's a generic type so i need to i'll provide here let's say something let's say beat object for now okay now i'm providing object only so if i'll see why it's giving me the error so it says override methods so i need to override these method because in its interface i need to override all these methods so now it's overridden and it's done so if you see the code is telling you what like the implementation which you had done here in the item class it's telling you what needs to be done the developer need not to decide whether it needs to handle types and all explicitly so we we call the accept method description an item visitor item visitor we implement it then so your id will anyways tell you like how to override it so it overrides all these three methods then if you see this is the cloth item it's accepting it food item is accepting and grocery item is accepting. okay now you just need to so now you just need to provide the implementation here so as we have provided here okay okay now I'll, I'll tell you so how this code is executing and how if the item type is food this will get executed okay so let's say i will run it in debug mode and i'll set the breakpoint here so stopped here okay now we have provided a food item now let me set a breakpoint here also and okay so it stopped here so item dot accept stopped here so now based on the item type it will go here accept okay now this accept so if the now the item type is current item type is food so this accept we have already done here in food item okay now in food item in overridden we are calling visitor which we have provided here in accept visitors a uh, visit method with food type item okay so that's why food type will get executed okay so here if you see the food is getting executed it won't execute any other thing okay so yeah so it didn't execute now it came to this one second one now it will stop to grocery executor okay okay now the third item it will go to cloth item executor and it's done so you'll see the different executors are being like executed for different item types so so it can be used like anywhere you have an item object and you need to make the decision you just need to call the accept method and new like new item visitor you need to implement as per your custom logic be it a business logic be it a utility method something else or if the logic is too large and you don't want to be in the like uh, your service class or anywhere so you can write a implementation here also so we can write a let's say item visitor implementation something like this which implements item visitor uh, like item okay uh, so we can write like this also and uh, this visitors instance we just need to provide here let's say this is the item visitor is a new item this implementation okay so this logic we are provided in this implementation and we just need to initialize this item visitor implementation and item dot accept here we can provide the item visitor okay so that's it so that's how it works so briefly i'll walk you through the second implementation also of the visitor design pattern so based on the requirements and your suitability you can implement any of them so if you'll see earlier we have accept method overridden in each of the item class but you can override it we can define and override it here in the item type enum also 
so what I have done is so I, I have defined an abstract method except here which accept the item type visitor so in item type visitor is also the same but as like instead of like uh, like method overriding we have defined the three different method visit for which is cross and visit clock because uh, because in that case the child entity was calling the visit method with its own instance but here it's inside the enum so we can't call it so that's why we need to initialize the, we need to define the three different methods okay so in now in each of the uh, item type class we have just override and call the specific method like in case of food we have uh, called the visit food visit cloth and uh, visit uh, visit cloth and visit grocery so if you will go here so in this case it's the same we just need to do one thing item dot get uh, so item dot get type uh, get type i have not defined so the item we should be of that type okay then item dot get type dot accept then the visitor implementation we need to give that's it so it's basically kind of same so thank you if you like the video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this Thanks.